No, NB, see, now you're messing me up. <laughs> it's a Baltic Nordic Missions Alliance is what it stands for. <laughs> we get the wording mixed up with the lettering. Um, but they are going to be in a number of people that are on that alliance are coming into town to meet here at the building on Friday. So please be praying for that. It'll be a great time as they're dreaming and scheming for where our missions goes to over in the Baltic Nordic area. So it'll be a great time this weekend. So we get the privilege of getting to have Elias here. I, I've heard some say he's single. Uh, we're not 100% sure, so I, I think it's just him that'll be here, but it'll be awesome to have him here and get to know him. Um, and he'll be preaching on Sunday. And then on right after service, we will have a small group leaders meeting um, where he's going to be speaking some more. So we'll get to hear more from him and his heart and his experience. So that'll be great. And we on Sunday will be having another fundraiser for helping the campus with ICMC and the other retreats that are going on. And we have our own Manny Sr. who's going to be making some brisket sandwiches. So you know it's going to be really good. So those lunches will be $12. So it'll be a brisket sandwich and I think coleslaw and chips and some other stuff. So um, please, if you can, um, help support that fundraiser for our campus. Um, let's see. We have a marriage strengthening class that will be starting up on April 20th. Um, and that is going to be led by the Goins and the Cuffies, and they're going to be going through the seven principles for making marriage work by John Gottman, which is a phenomenal book. Um, and so we would love any marriages that need some strengthening, which don't we all, right? <laughs> um, would encourage you guys to go and be a part of that. It'll be on Saturday from six to seven thirty at the building. So with the Cuffies being here tonight, if you have any questions, you can contact them. Uh, our next Spanish service is April 21st. And then men's retreat is fast approaching. And uh, so please get signed up and registered for that if you have not yet. Um, that's going to be an incredible time for the guys. And while the guys are away, the women... We're not going to play, but <laughs> we're going to meet. We're going to have a great service on Sunday. Um, on the April 28th, our own Kathy Moreski is going to be speaking for us on that day. Um, so we'll be planning a great service that Sunday um, for, during that time. And let's see, I believe that was all. So at this time, Gwen is going to come up and pray for us. Okay, let us pray. Good evening, God. Thank you so much for this time that we can be together, and thank you for bringing us here this evening after our days, whether they were work days or relaxing days or whatever. Just grateful to be together. I pray uh, your blessings over our service. I pray that you're with us, and you'll help us to learn what it is that you have for each of us, and I pray it for a great time of fellowship. We're grateful to be together, grateful to have one another. Please be with Steve as he leads us tonight and in your word. We love you and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Well, God's on the move. The weather is brightening up. That late winter run is past us, but still snow on the hills. Uh, encouragingly, last Wednesday, uh, we had 19 kids in the uh, teen class um, and so uh, they're, they're, they're blowing it out. The, in fact, those teens are starting to look at the campus room like, hey, we might need to move into your space right there. We'll see how that goes with Manny and Angelina. Let's see. My PowerPoint is not up here, guys, if we can possibly get it up here. It's up here in the small window, but not in the bigger screen. I don't know if you can make that adjustment so I don't have to look back as much would be great. All right, tonight we're going to be talking about uh, listening to God. Are you tuned in? Listening to God. We're going to look at a multiplicity of ways that God communicates uh, with us. And uh, we'll start with Luke chapter 8. That's awesome. We got it. We'll start with Luke 8. 
Jesus said, therefore, consider carefully how you listen. So first of all, there's a, a various different ways that we could listen. We could listen casually. We could listen like we know better. We can, uh, you know, hey, I'll, I'll take what you have in mind and take it home. There's different ways that we can listen. There's different manners. Uh, one of the fascinating things in the Old Testament is the word Shema for listen is the same as the word for obey. So when God says, listen, you know, I will tell you this. He, he means listen in such a way as, as, I, as I'm communicating, you're making a decision to be like this. Uh, so listen in an accepting way. In, in English, we say, listen, yeah, I'll, I'll hear you out. Like, I'll consider what you have to say. Uh, but when God speaks, it's more like, no, listen in a way that you're assuming I'm right and you're just going to come on in line with me. Uh, you're going to shema me. You're going to listen well. So we have to consider what Jesus says. I want you guys to consider carefully. Really think about your manner of listening. I want you to really think about it uh, because there, there, there's a lot at stake. And listening is not quite as easy as we sometimes, it's not an auditory thing. Listening is a processing thing that we need to get good at if we're going to listen to God. Okay, anyone recognize this picture? From your 1970 Dodge Dart, right? So one of the great things about growing up in this age is when you went to tune in the radio, you had to kind of go back and forth a little bit to find that sweet spot. Uh, a little too far here, a little too far there, and it would be a little fuzzy. And if you wanted to rock your tunes in your car, uh, you'd, you'd have to tune it in and, uh, and go through that little gymnastics there. Now we have the seek button, and you hit that on your digital radio, and it does it for you. And so, unfortunately, uh, today's youth are missing out on a great experience. And then some of us had this one. And it was really fuzzy sometimes, those three stations that we used to have. It was really fuzzy, so you had to uh, pull out the ears some people even put a little bit of uh, foil on the ears. Sometimes someone would hold it and watch. Uh, if you were really endowed with, with money, you could put some ears up on your roof and run a cable from those ears to your ears and get double ears or however that worked. But you had to make some adjustments to tune in to the frequency. You had to, you had to work at it. Uh, in our fast food, fast-paced society, what we want is quick communication from God. We want it our way. We want it right now. Hey, God, I got 10 minutes. I got my coffee here at Starbucks. You know, I'm going to get into the Word. Okay, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And it's kind of like chop, chop. You know, cosmic bellhop. Hey, God, I want to, you know, I, I want to be close to you. I want to be close to you. Let's get to it. I've, I've set aside these 12 minutes to spend with you. So let's get to it. What do you got to say? But we really haven't prepared ourselves to listen. And we really don't get it that it's on his timing and uh, that we'll find him when we seek him with all of our heart, not just with a you know, small portion of time here and there. Our whole heart has to be invested. If we're going to connect to the creator, we've got to honor him as creator. And there's not a certain amount of time, an hour quiet time works, but 40 minutes doesn't. It's, God doesn't, I don't think, work with a time requirement, but it is a heart set that, God, I want to get tuned into you, and I realize you're a holy being, and and I'm not, I'm only holy because the blood of the Lamb, but, you know, I'm still fraught with human frailty. God, help me get close to you. There needs to be a desperation and a God dependence in even listening in and tuning in to God. We know that God's a communicator. All creation speaks of his existence. He's communicating through his creation. But what has he been communicating uh, to you personally? How has he been trying to communicate with you? And... Have you been tuning in is the question of the night. You know, God's communication with us uh, is often subtle. In 1 Kings 19, when Elijah goes to seek the Lord, uh, for the first 40 days, he's just getting ministered to his physical and emotional needs, his need for rest. There's really not much communicating going on for those 40 days as he goes to Horeb. But then finally, after some dramatic displays of God's power, it says, after the fire came, a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, and he went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. 
And so God's communication, his actual words to Elijah came very quietly, they came very subtly, and they came only after a period where Elijah got into his spiritual senses and was able to receive the revelation about the 7,000 and so forth that haven't bended and about uh, anointing Elijah. And so uh, there's, a, there's a process that goes in to listening to God. 1 Samuel 3 is an interesting uh, case study of this whole idea of listening to God. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There are not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out yet. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call you. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. If he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. And so Samuel had not yet developed the spiritual senses to figure out that the Lord was communicating to him. And as we'll go through uh, today, I'll look at uh, a a number of different ways that God speaks to us. And uh, I just want to encourage us to be open to the different senses that God's going to come through to speak to us. You know, typically we were like, okay, God speaks to us through Bible study and prayer. But it's a little more extensive than that, uh, biblically speaking. And true, those are, are some of the main ways that God does. We need to be great. Uh, Bible study and prayer, you know, it's two great things to, be, uh, to, be, to do well at. Uh, but it's a little more nuanced uh, than that in terms of how God speaks to us in totality. So first of all, let's just talk briefly about uh, the Bible study part, the time in the Word. For the Word of God is alive and active. You know, when we read the words of God... It's just as if they were penned the, the, last night. When you read the book of Hebrews, it's just as if that writer, we still don't know who that is, by the way, it's just as if P- Apollo or Priscilla or whoever wrote it, it was writing last night, and we're getting a fresh revelation from God. When we read the book of Mark, when we read the book of Luke, that it's the, it's the Word of God, so it's living and active. And so uh, uh, when I do a word study with someone, I talk about, um, you know, when you eat an apple or you eat something alive, it has a physical effect on your heart, uh, on your body. Okay, your cells are affected. If you put sugar into your cells, they're going to have energy. If you put protein in your cells, they're going to synthesize it into muscle tissue. It's going to have an effect when you put living things into your body. So when we approach the Word of God, it is alive and active. It is going to have an effect on the person reading those words. Now, depending on the state of our heart, when the words are read to us, it could harden our hearts. It can soften our hearts. It can comfort our hearts. It could convict. It can inspire. It can encourage. It can do all kinds of different things. But Jesus' parables made some fall on their faces and say, no one ever spoke like this. And it's made some really mad and want to do something to them. It all depends on the state of the heart. So I want to ask us, before we approach the Word of God, if we do believe this is the Word of God, right? I know a lot of us have well-worn Bibles and all that sort of thing, but, you know, I think we can get a little familiar with the Lord. You know, it's Tuesday morning, whatever time, five, six, whatever time, lunch break. Oh, well, we can read. You know, I'm a disciple. We're going to get into it. All right, I guess today we're in Romans. And, and I'm fine with flipping around, by the way, and looking at different scriptures. Some people 
not into that. Like, you got to have a set plan and all that. I believe in both. It's okay to have a set plan and it's okay to roam around. Pers- personal opinion. But when we go to read the Word, if we're saying this is the Word of God and it's alive and active, I dare say we not be cocky as we open the Word of God and be like, yeah, I know, I know, yep, da da da, law is sinful, certainly not, blah, 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 I get the point, and move on. We're entering the throne, order of God, throne room of God and saying, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And you're opening a living spiritual tissue, and it's going to have an effect on your heart. So if we approach it like the the you know like a spoiled brat and yeah I know I know and yeah what's well, okay yeah yeah basically what's the okay yeah and we okay I get it and just get a head understanding instead of man I'm I'm reading to get close to God I'm going to embrace this and I'm going to expect God to move during this time it's all about our faith in how we open the Word of God what has God been communicating if we've been approaching it humbly if we tremble at His Word. Uh, we should be coming away with times in our word that are memorable, that we say, man, God really spoke to me here. And he used this scripture to help me be a better parent. He used this scripture to really encourage me in how I've grown in this area. He used this scripture to really help me see my need for the brothers more. I've been a little independent. There should be a cause and effect that happen in our time in the word. Amen? The next way he communicates is through his son. In the past, Hebrews 1, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom He also made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful Word. God used to speak through the prophets A lot of different ways he spoke through them. But in these last days, thankfully we're born in the last days. We have the ultimate revelation because we don't just have a prophet as great as Moses was, great as Elijah was. We don't just have a prophet. We have the exact representation of God's being that walked the earth and gave us the word of God and modeled the spirit uh, of the scriptures as well as providing the word of the scriptures. Let me give you an example. In, uh, in the book of Matthew, they're arguing, the Pharisees are arguing with Jesus about what divorce stance he has. And there's two schools, Hillel and, Ra- uh, Hillel and Shema, and they're arguing back and forth about basically how much does a wife have to do to earn herself a root divorce. One group said for any and every reason, as long as they provide a certificate of divorce, and the other group said no, it has to be a sexual thing, and there's this divided camp. So they're They're trying to trap Jesus and get him to weigh in on this Jewish debate. And uh, Jesus says, man, you guys don't know your Bibles. And they're pointing to the Scripture. No, it says here, give her a certificate of divorce. You know, we're just just debating the the fine point. Jesus said, no, that's, that's not at all what the Word of God is really trying to say. Moses allowed you to divorce because your hearts were hard. That scripture is not God's will for your life. If you go back to the beginning, God created them male and female and said, what what God has joined together, let not man separate. That's what the Word of God teaches. See, in these last days, God has spoken through the Son, and He's given us an even clearer revelation of what God is really all about and what the scriptures really say. You have to know Jesus to even understand fully what the Old Testament says, according to Jesus. And so if you're just reading the Old Testament and pulling things out, uh, but you're not reading it with the love of God, the love of Jesus, the authority of Jesus, and how He looks at those scriptures, then we're we're missing the boat. We're, We're not seeing clearly and hearing clearly what God has to say. Only Jesus could, could proclaim, hey, the old, old testament, it hangs on two prophet on two two commands. You gotta love God and love people. Everything else just fills out those basic things. So when in doubt, in any situation, what's the love of God thing to do in this situation and what's the love of people thing to do? You don't have to go find an exact verse for everything. Sometimes in a situation, just what's the love of God and what's the love of people telling me to do in this situation? But what has God been communicating to you by His Son? That's what He communicated to uh, the Pharisees there, that, hey, you guys are misunderstanding Scripture and you're twisting it to your own destruction to justify your sin. 
And so that's what he was teaching them. What has he te- been teaching you through the Son? And thankfully, uh, we have some great communion talks on, on, on Sunday, and we continue to probe the depths of what the Son is doing for us. Amen? But what has God been communicating through His Spirit? So He speaks through His Word, He speaks through His Son, and now we learn in Galatians, He's also communicating uh, to us through His Spirit. Galatians 5, so I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh, for the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So if we have this attitude of, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening, Now we're told outside of Bible study and prayer when we're sweeping things up, when we're serving at work, when we're doing our chores, when we're watching TV with friends, whatever we're doing, however ways that we're walking, the Spirit is right there the whole time communicating to us and saying, hey, here's the spiritual thing to do. Hey, why don't you ask them this question? Hey, it seems like you're being a little selfish there with the popcorn. Why don't you see if they want some? But whatever the Spirit's doing, He's not just going to let you just hang out and live in the flesh. It's, our, our, our time with God is not over. When the Bible gets close, the Spirit goes, all right, I'm taking over. I'm going to guide you. And the Spirit's going to encourage us when we're in line with His will. It's going to give us a little prompting like, hey, man, you know, you could, you could help out right there. It's going to communicate many times and in many ways. But are we listening? Are we are we taking that dial back and forth? Uh, after service on, on uh, Sunday, I had one conversation before, uh, before church that I was, I was kind of joking around with a brother, and I just thought to myself, I need to make sure that I'm good with that brother. Like, did I overstep there? So I went in and asked him, and uh, uh, apparently I didn't. Um, he said it was, everything was cool, but it felt good just to feel like, man, the Spirit's telling me to go check back in with that guy. Um, but... This is one of those cases where, man, the Spirit's just communicating with us all, all, all the time, but are we listening? One of the most frightening scriptures to me in all of the Bible is in Acts chapter 8, where God, the Spirit, the angel, the Lord, they, they get involved with Philip, and they say, go stand by that chariot, and he sees someone reading the Bible, and he studies with them and baptizes them that day. And the reason it's one of the most frightening scriptures is how many people in my lifetime, 34 years now as a disciple, as God said, hey, go over that basketball court and start a conversation with those guys. Hey, go over that, that person's having trouble uh, with their groceries. Go help them out, and I want you to invite them to church. They're, they're, they've prayed to me last night to be invited to a church. How many people has God tried to tell me, go talk to that person? But I was just like, I'm tired. I'm getting my groceries. I'm going home. No, I'm not. I'm just doing my thing. Today's not the day. How many times have I told the Lord that versus, all right, God, I'm tired, but, you know, whenever you go get groceries, there's like four or five other people putting them away, you know, at the same time into their cars. There's almost always an opportunity to go, hey, man, you know, just want to stop me for a second. I don't know if you have a church to go to. And I'm not saying that every trip to the grocery store, you always have to invite someone. Not a bad policy, though. What I'm saying is, how many times, if God wants all men to be saved, how many people is God trying to nudge us? to talk to, but we're just not listening. We're just not tuned in at that moment. You know, when we communicate and connect with the Lord, it leads to spiritual renewal and spiritual power. Uh, it's It's a refreshing thing as well as a direction thing. Isaiah 40, 31, but those who hope in the Lord will renew your strength. James 4, come near to God and He will come near to you. One of the fascinating studies in the Gospels is Jesus' time with God. We know Jesus got tired, right? Sat down by the well. We know he got frustrated. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Are you so dull? We know he got some feelings about things. Didn't sin, but struggled. Amen? But he goes spend time with God. And if you research what happened after he filled up with God, incredible miracles happen, like this one here in Luke 6. So he comes... After an all-night time with God, <coughs> he comes down. This is a sermon on the plain. And it says, those troubled by impure spirits were cured. And the people all tried to touch him <coughs> because power was coming from him and healing them. 
most of the miracles you read about Jesus, he's putting mud on the eyes, he's rebuking demons, some woman's touching him and power goes out from him. They're very specific, one-time miracles. Most of the time when you see Jesus' miracles. In this case, after spending this, this all night with God, he comes down, preaches the sermon on the plane, and power is just kind of emanating from him. And people are just trying to get nearby because they're going to be healed by their diseases. And then we see Jesus, you know, it's called the Acts of the Apostles, but it's really the Acts of the Holy Spirit, right? Jesus ascends to heaven, he sends his Holy Spirit down, and he's doing the same thing through Paul. He's doing the same thing through Peter. There are times where Paul was so full of the Spirit and so close to God that as he walked through the, the streets of Jerusalem, people were laying the sick just so his shadow would pass over him. And when he dropped a handkerchief, they're trying to get the handkerchief to try to get some miracle stuff off that handkerchief. I mean, the spiritual power is just kind of emanating during those times. So two things I take encouragement from that, from this principle, is one, uh, these spiritual giants can get drained too. So when we're feeling drained, like, man, I just don't have it. I just don't have any love right now. I just don't have any oomph. Okay, there's a prescription for that, which is come near to God and he will come near to you. And it's probably not going to be 12 minutes. I don't know the length of time for you, but it's going to be like a seeking, right? It's going to be set aside time. I'm going to get with God. And we need those longer, intense times with God. So these guys needed it. They got empty, but they were able to be filled up. But the other thing is, it's possible to be spiritually on fire. We don't just have to fill up to 20%, go down. Fill up to 20%, go down. We can get higher. We can get to 80, 90% full of the Spirit and go down. We can get, there's, there's more room that the Spirit has to move in our lives. You know, God also communicates through other people. Uh, he told the Corinthians, Thanks be to God who put into the heart of Titus the same concern I have for you. You know, it's an awesome thing in the Lord to just have people in our heart, right? That we love deeply, people in our family group, the, the church at large. Uh, physical members of our of our body, um, but uh, God's God's working at a deeper level than we think. We just kind of take care of our friends and people that we've bonded with spiritually, and just kind of well, it's the thing to do. I I love them, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there, you know. When I know they're going through something, I'm gonna encourage them. Uh, when I know they're they're winning and and they need someone to celebrate with them, I'm gonna be. And it just kind of that's a good thing. But scripturally, Paul says, man, Titus has you guys on his heart, and it was God himself that put you there. I mean, the Corinthians were beating up church, right? Drunk at the communion, immorality, crazy stuff. Uh, eating communion, the rich people were eating communion in front of the poor. And being like, hmm, that was good. What you going to eat? It was a lot. They're comparing preachers. We like Apollos. We like Peter. Paul, eh, I like your letters. I don't like your speaking. It was kind of a, they were, they're, they're an immature group. Paul's like, man, I praise God that Titus, the concern for you guys was put on the heart of Titus by God himself. He goes, you guys needed more support than I could offer you. We just kind of think that all just happens naturally. You know, whoever's on my heart's whoever on my heart. No, no, God's got people that he wants, wants you to love. He's, he's going to put it on your heart. Here and I were asked to lead the teen ministry in 1997. And uh, I was teaching eighth graders at the time in a bad area. I was losing my mind. I was about to go to the loony bin, ask Carrie. Going to night school, leading ministries, God and coffee. I don't know how I made it through. But on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m., Todd Spath asked Carrie and I, hey, we'd like to, you guys to lead the teens. We're time to start a teen ministry. Todd, my friend, I'm about to kill the kids I have throughout the week. And you want me to do this on my nights and weakness, weekends? This is what I thought. It's not what I said. What I said was, Amen, bro. 
<laughs> sure. <laughs> and then the next week, it's Sunday. I thought I had a day to pray about it. Apparently not. At Sunday, he makes the announcement. Stephen Carrier leading our teen ministry. <sighs> I guess we're doing it now. And then uh, this gal, Patty, comes over. Looks just a little bit like Brianna. He's at ABC campus. Comes over and, hey, my little brother wants to study the Bible. He's in eighth grade. I go, that's great, man. I was planning on going home, watching some football after a park service, but I guess I'm leading the team. So I, so I go, well, I think we have to ask your parents. So yeah, my, my grandma's raising me. She's right over here. We can just go talk to her right now. Okay. Go to talk to grandma. Can Freddie study the Bible? Yeah, Freddie can study the Bible. All right. I don't want to lead this ministry. I don't want to be in this Bible study. Sit down. We get two scriptures into the Word study. Word of God's living and active. Da, 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 da. This eighth grader responding to the Word. Man, I just need to get with God. This is awesome. It takes me to like the fourth scripture to think this is awesome. Still thinking, why me? I'm working hard. Why are you, why are you shoving me in the teens? The fourth scripture, I was like, it's amazing to be here. This is a real heart for God right here. Go to our first Devo the next Friday night. You guys know, you've been teen leaders. You've got to give up every Friday night of your life. You've got to pick them up and drop them off. And to pull off a Bible study on a Thursday night, you've got to go here, pick up that guy, pick up that guy, return. Your gas just goes down. You get home late. And you still get up the same time the next morning. You guys know the, the, the program, right? And these kids just got into our heart. We just loved it. And, you know, we ended up getting more teen leaders. And, and, uh, and one, of the, one of the kids got so in my heart. Oh, Louie, if you're out there, Louie, pay attention. That we almost, we thought about adopting him. His mom was illegal and, you know, the whole situation. And, you know, he was that much in, in our heart after one year. that man, maybe we should consider adopting him. And we stayed in touch a little bit. He called me on Father's Day. That was awesome. It's one of the, the burdens of my life, not knowing where he is. He's got like, his name is, uh, his name is Louis, first name, last name. Do you remember his last name, Carrie? I usually know it, maybe for the internet. Luis Curiel. There you go. Luis Curiel out there. Luis Curiel is the John Smith of South America. So if you try to, I find, try to find him, like I used to do research and call around, but I've tried to find him uh, on the internet, well, there's like three million Luis Curiels. It's the John Smith of last, you know. So I've sent friend requests, I've sent messages, are you the Luis from da 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 da? But it's one of those, my name is Luis Alejandro, so I don't know which two names are really his. So pray about that. I'd love to run into Luis again. But God just puts on it on your heart who he puts on your heart. It's a God thing. It's not us because we're all awesome. God just loves people and he'll put someone on your heart that you're just going to fight for. And it's a great thing because it protects them, protects you. Everybody grows through it. God communicates through our consciences. Timothy, my son, I'm giving you his command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well. Holding on to faith, and a good conscience, which some have rejected and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to the faith. And so an additional communication method. God's protecting our souls. and He's given us this conscience, which can be sure, uh, 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 seared. It can be jaded at times. We've got to do our best to protect our conscience. But in addition to speaking it to us through His Spirit, there are times where He's going to speak to your conscience. And so we got to keep a good conscience. If we reject faith and a good conscience, we, we shipwreck our faith. And so we got to be very tender and in tune as we think about what our consciences are allowing us to do. It's awesome in the, uh, to be in fellowship with people because sometimes the way you hear people talk about their decisions or how they fear the Lord, it just kind of renews your conscience. Like, oh, that's pure-hearted. I want to be more like that. And it kind of protects your conscience when someone has a better conscience in a certain area, doesn't it? God places things in our hearts. Nehemiah, I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. Nehemiah had great plans for Jerusalem, 
But those were God plans. God said do this. And he followed through and had victory because he followed what God had put on, on his heart. Are we in tune with what God's putting on our heart to do in our small group, in our family, in our marriages? What's God putting on, on your heart? He's got great dreams for your life. He's going to put, but we've got to be in tune. We've got to be praying about that. God, what's, what's on your heart? What do you want to put on my heart? Uh, well, I'd like you to be a better friend. Well, I'd like you to be a better servant. Well, I'd like you to you know, just be more open with your life. He's going to be putting some things on your heart. That's what our God does. But are we tuning in? Here's a strange one for us in our tradition. God speaks through dreams and visions. Aren't there things in the Scriptures that you go, yeah, I'm not doing that. This is one of those I almost never hear anyone share. I had this dream, and I prayed about it, and I think this is what God's... I think we're really scared of this one. It's in the Bible. But this is one that we're just a little like, I don't know, bro. All right, let's read it together. During the night, that's when people sleep, Paul had a vision of a man from Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After God, Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. They had a vision. Seems like they had a D group the next morning, prayed about it, they had a vision, and they figured out, okay, what God's trying to do is get this ministry over to Macedonia. And sure enough, they go over to Macedonia, and things go great, and the gospel grows. Now, scientifically, we have some dreams that are just kind of a, a mesh of like crazy stuff in our head, right? Some of the dreams we have, we're like, ooh, you're scary, dude. Get some counseling. You got some kind of bees flying around and da-da-da, you know, random stuff going on. You're just like, whoa, I ate too late last night. So there's certainly dreams that require probably no interpretation on our part. I'm just saying, if God is trying to help all men on earth be saved, perhaps there are some dreams he places on your heart. You're not doing anything else when you're sleeping, right? Actually, I listen to headphones, I do a podcast, and I fall asleep to it. Uh, but only for seven minutes, and I'm asleep. I mean, why couldn't God put things on our hearts while we're sleeping? I was saying we should tune in and keep open to the possibility. When I was, when I was better-hearted as a young Christian, I'd read my Bible to the latest possible, and then I'd be like, all right, God, we've got to separate for a little while, but like, do something in my heart while I'm sleeping. You know, minister to me, inspire me, you know. Definitely multiply the five hours I'm about to get into eight. You know, like do some math there for me. Definitely that was a common prayer for us. Uh, But God did did speak through dreams and visions. But I rarely run into someone in the fellowship and go, Steve, I'm so excited. I had this dream and da-da-da. And what I concluded was God is calling me to X. Um, And so we need to be open to the possibility because it's in the Bible. Okay? It's in the Bible. Uh, here's, here's another one that's in the Bible. Uh, we'll close with those. I'm ending with two strange ones because by this time, you're not paying attention. The Hebrew writer said, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Does anyone believe in Angels. Does anyone believe they're all retired and they no longer make any appearances on earth anymore? I think they're still ministering. Are are not all angels ministering spirits sent to those who will inherit, inherit salvation? They are. And one of the ways that we get a spiritual connection with God through angels is through our love for strangers. Now, it's a little different in our culture. We don't exactly... uh, pull total strangers off the road and bring them into our home any longer in our society. In fact, we teach against it as kids. We we still got to examine that practice if that's totally biblical to never invite anyone. Now, in a way, we practice it at church because people come to church, you get to know them a couple times, you're like, hey, come to the house for brats, and you get to know a stranger, someone you just met at church. So we're still having strangers in that way. But because God is in the communication business and because hospitality to strangers is a thing that's held up all throughout the, the Scriptures, are we, are we in that practice? And maybe, maybe there's some other practical ways we can do that. You know, you're 
uh, see someone that could use a Chipotle burrito, instead of just giving the money for that, you know, homeless person or whatever, hey man, let's, let's go eat. Now you're in a public place. Hey, the two of us are, you know, Glenn and I are having some, some spiritual time. Would you like to join us? You know, grab a burrito with us. And uh, there, there are ways we can do this safely, but we should be in the regular practice of showing hospitality, not just throwing money at people, but showing hospitality uh, to people who look like they need it. And the scriptures say that's one of the ways we communicate uh, in the spiritual realm. It's one of the ways that sometimes the angels, we shouldn't do it for that reason. We should be hospitable if we never hear from God. Uh, but we could have some pretty incredible conversations uh, without knowing that we were interacting with a supernatural being right there. In conclusion, uh, let's have this speak, Lord, for your servant is listening spirit. Jesus told us to consider carefully how we listen. And so we should have this attitude that, God, you're speaking in all these ways through your spirit, your son, your word, conscience, other people. We should be tuning in. Hey, God, how are you speaking to me right now? How are you speaking through my work? How are you speaking through my health? How are you speaking through my conduct? How are you speaking through these different ways? God, I just want to know what you're saying uh, uh, so that I can be in a good communication relationship with you. So I hope we'll all consider carefully how we listen as we uh, uh, spend time with the Lord, as we walk with Him, that we're open to the many ways He speaks to us. And uh, what we'll do with the last seven minutes and 32 seconds is uh, we'll just kind of uh, divide up in the fellowship by twos and threes and have a couple discussion questions, but you could share anything you want from the lesson, but here's a couple to wet your whistle. Uh, what scripture most built up your faith and how have you been doing in terms of tuning in? Hopefully those will be good conversation starters. You guys are amazing. Don't forget to sign up if you haven't outside so we can love up on those foster kids. Let's say a prayer. Yes. We have one special, well, we always have special birthdays, but we want to say a special happy birthday to Todd Ankeny. Todd is a super long-term pillar, soft-hearted, a great man of God, and uh, we celebrate you today, Todd. God, uh, we are just grateful for this time to be in your word. We're thankful for Todd and the great example, the pillar he's been in the church for many years. Uh, bless him on his birthday, and uh, God, just uh, bless us as we seek you with all of our hearts. We want to be great communicators with you, but God, we want to tune into your communication with us. In Jesus we pray, amen. Have a great fellowship, friends.